So recently I did a video called the vlogging shot list and that's aimed at people trying to tell you how to vlog and tell a better story. But there is another way of storytelling that I teased in that video which we're going to talk about today. Okay, let's break it down. For thousands of years there has been a way, like a formula, which uh, people use. I think it's been framed by Aristotle and it's like a three-phase story arc that is very much used and it's still used for YouTube as well. And we can go over some examples of how that works. So the whole thing starts with the exposition and that is kind of laying the ground and the backstory for the story that you're about to tell. And it's exactly what it says. You expose the viewer to what they're about to get into, right? If you are someone trying to commit some part of their life or day to your story, they want to know why. So expose them to what it is. And often in novels or whatnot, this is where something dramatic will happen. And I don't know exactly the name, but it's like the catch, you know, like, whoa, what is it in, in it for me? that I will find interesting in this. And then from there we want to do some rising action to lead to the climax. Everybody knows what the climax is, it's kind of the dramatic moment of your story. Hollywood and you know most of the TV shows out there do this really well because you need a climax to really draw in the viewer and make them want to watch the rest of your story. Yeah, so if you had introduced a challenge in the exposition phase, then it gets harder and harder as the story unfolds. And then you have a climax where usually in Hollywood, that's where all the, the formula becomes cheesy, where it all ties together every single time and blah, blah, blah. So A lot of times in Hollywood, it's the same climax. That's why you see the same types of stories playing out because they're following this exact formula. <laughs> yeah. And for good reason, because it works. Right, so that's really kind of the last meaningful or major thing that happens. And in the end, it winds down with an epilogue where you know, it usually kind of answers questions about what happens to the character later or just like the resolution of everything all comes together kind of in a low-key way, not like a dramatic moment. And so this is how it works, you know, it's been written about and it's been used for thousands of years and we can talk about some examples how YouTubers are still doing it. We ourselves don't do exactly that and we'll explain why. And will explain how you can actually weave it in and make hybrids out of this. So not all YouTubers follow this type of storytelling, ourselves included, but some examples out there of vloggers that do this at times, not all the time, but are Karen, Nate, Yes Theory, Ava Zubek will do this a lot. And so those are some channels that you can look at some of their videos and often see this exact story structure playing out. Yeah, so there's, you know, a reason to do this because your viewer needs some kind of bait and so you want them to think that this is going to be engaging right interesting for them something will happen that makes them feel something though you have to watch out because a lot of vloggers they want to do that and because that's the formula that's what everybody does that's what has worked you know and then they try to cling on very trivial things that happen because Nothing truly interesting happens in their day. <laughs> well, you have to make some kind of drama, right? So if your drama is, I was driving my car and ran out of gas, well, I guess that can be a story. And so, you know, in their defense, sometimes you have to take trivial things and make them a drama. Otherwise, you're planning too much ahead. And so if you plan your drama or plan your climax a little too well, then it can look really contrived. Conversely, it can also look contrived if you're dramatizing trivial things very hard. So, so you're walking a fine line either way. Exactly. You just have to be pretty careful about it. And so for us, that's why we very loosely have our story planned out. And that's why we don't really follow the story structure. So let's talk about how we do it. We have an example of a video from our travel channel, Gemini Discover, where we went on a long road trip for 5,000 miles. And, you know, that's a challenge of its own. That was the overarching story arc in the background. But the certain episode, we were driving between Breckenridge and Aspen in Colorado. And it was like the fifth or sixth mountain pass we were doing. But this one was the hardest and we didn't even know we were going to do it. In Colorado, there's like a daily storm. So this is kind of like a one lane road. Look at this. It's not very, Jeez. yeah, it's not obvious, but yeah, it is. This weather is insane. <laughs> I was praying that this weather doesn't catch us when the road is open and you're hanging off the edge. Uh -huh. Which I got my wish. Yeah. But now it's still not really 
October, uh -uh. we're getting massive raindrops and really yeah. strong winds. Yeah. And so here's an example of us not contriving anything. We just allow it to happen because that's how we do that. You know, we don't like to be over the top staged or dramatic or orchestrated or act in a way that's unnatural to us. But when the opportunity is there, we will do something along that type of story arc. And another thing to say about that is that our initial story arc or climax was just driving this mountain pass. We didn't actually know it was going to be super scary. So you can have your original climax be something as simple as, hey, I want to drive. It's actually maybe better to call it a goal, right? Like, what's your whole goal of your story? And then as things happen that maybe make it more dramatic, that rising action, you can play it up a little bit and just kind of tell your viewer what's going on. So this transitions into the topic that um, since we do travel logging, really, there has been a style called a travel log all along on paper and text and that one works a little bit differently than the Aristotle drama it's more so here's who I am here's what I'm out to accomplish there's a mission it's farther away there are challenges about getting there here's how we overcome them let us take you on that experience mm -hmm. and you will notice a lot of travel vloggers do exactly that and they don't necessarily try to make a drama out of it they simply make a travel log out of it or some people make a travel guide and that's something we do as well and if nothing dramatic happens we actually resort or fall back to just laying out one two three four five this is what is worth seeing on this journey with that said if something does go wrong during your whole journey it's actually better to go along and film it because that can end up being part of your rising action or even your actual climax depending on how dramatic it is and I would say that you know especially as you're getting started it can be really hard to film those moments because you don't want to show things going wrong because it looks like oh I messed up and you know it's gonna be super embarrassing but it actually makes for a better story and so you know we have a couple examples of this where we don't really weave it in according to the story structure but one would be when we went to Winthrop, uh, part of Washington State here, we actually hit a deer, <laughs> crashed our car like the first day, and that actually changed the whole outlook of that entire trip. And it's our birthday. Yeah, it's your birthday today. My birthday was yesterday. So it's our birthday weekend adventure. All right, this is the second update from our birthday road trip, and this one is not so positive. So we were driving uh, from Seattle out to Winthrop and Twist, Washington, and along the way we hit a deer and it's pretty smashed so right now we're waiting for the tow truck i'm gonna hop into it go an hour away to an actual city and look for a car rental while susie is going to enjoy the resort here by the river but that's something that happened on day one and we had to really quickly adapt to it and i actually wish we had played it up a little bit more but i think we did a pretty good job considering yeah i think so we did good content so the first episode did end up being about the crash and the following episodes ended up being about what actually there is to see in that area um, so yeah, it was an example of doing that, so had we not talked about it on camera as it was happening, we would not be able to tell that story. Um, and this is the thing, you want to leave yourself flexibility, you don't want to have too much of a rigid plan in your head, because I think that kind of cripples your creativity. And you are more authentic if you allow things to unfold naturally. Other people have their own styles, they work well for them, and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, I personally, uh, I don't watch things where they overly dramatize trivial things because it makes me cringe and I turn it off. Um, but those people have huge followings. And here's one thing worth saying about all that is that you mentioned Eva Zubek who started out really making documentaries about like, oh, here's a shepherd in a village in Romania and I'm there with a the camera to show you what their life is like. So that's documentary about someone else's drama, truly. While lately what she's doing is a pivot towards dramatizing her life and it's all about her and those little things that she finds very dramatic or at least tries to present as such and there she loses me because I liked her documentaries but I don't really care for this drama. So I guess that's where things divide where certain audiences actually don't like that as much and they start tuning out versus I actually find it a little bit more interesting that she's focusing more on herself and how she gets through problems and so different audience different different approach to storytelling but it can sometimes work depending on your approach. With travel vlogging in particular, it's a little bit different than the theater drama. And it's actually more experiential, I would say, where you're saying, hey, 
here's what I'm out to accomplish. Let me take you on that experience with me. And many people are quite successful with that approach. You know, you have Bolden Bankrupt and Harold Boulder, for example, who made it with big audiences because they do a good authentic look of what the journey is like. And it doesn't have to have a crazy drama or anything, but they truly um, make the viewer curious about, hey, what is it like to be in the biggest slum in India? Or what is it like to be chasing baboons or something in uh, Tanzania? Uh, there's another channel, Far and Fearless, who does that really well as well. He's all about the experiences and he tries to seek out unique ones. And that's the interest in it. So, you know, you don't have to stick to the theater drama in this case and it's for travel vlogs it's actually more common to do it this way so these are just a few things to think about you don't have to stick to it like a formula some people think so but you can really be loose you can do a travel log you can do a travel guide you can make it all about yourself you can make uh, aristotle greek drama out of it up to you yeah and i think the whole point of us telling you about this is really to encourage people that haven't started making videos at all. If you're getting started vlogging and you just don't know what to what to make a video about, then you can stick to something like the Aristotle storytelling structure and start off like that. I think it's just more important to get out there and start making videos. And so if that's what helps you get inspired, then take that for what it's worth. All right, see you next time.